It's looking to be a busy year for the Canadian Armed Forces. Renewed operations, infrastructure improvements, and at long last, more working equipment. Ah, uh, sorry, that's supposed to say more equipment to work with. Canada's defence policy promises to look long-term this year, with the features and flexibility needed to respond to our changing world. The motto for which cries out as, strong, secure, and engaged. Sounds like the emergency break on my LSVW. Many of last year's operations will be continuing missions that extend into our new year. And so, before we completely floor this thing to 85 on a downslope, let us reflect on a year past, glorious 2021, and all that it brought to our inbox. Like a lost Canadian looking for a bar that's still serving, the Canadian Armed Forces spread itself far and wide across not just our beautiful country, but the world. Over 2,000 serving members have been deployed on more than 20 different operations. Here are just some of those highlights. We took to numerous seas in our continuing mission to train in warmer climates. These had our floatiest boats like the Halifax-class frigates and the Harry DeWolf vessels deploy to South America and the Caribbean Basin to engage with local security partners. Here they combined forces for training training, exercises, and a little bit of obstruction to organize crime on the high seas. Can't wait to see your tans, boys. Meanwhile, Canadian air and sea people worked on stopping terrorism to further ensure security in Middle Eastern and East African waters. Multiple ship deployments would be involved, while CP-140 Aurora aircraft attempted to prove to the world we had an air force by conducting maritime surveillance in these areas. These operations are part of a larger naval partnership with 33 other nations, and one of the primary goals is to disrupt pirate activities by blocking the flow of illicit drugs and trafficking, while also ensuring Tom Hanks can safely move about the region. Treasures must be protected. Several operations saw us deploy to support old and new friends in Europe, most notably our NATO buddy Latvia, who continued putting us up on their couch ever since we came over for a visit in 2014. Now I don't know if we pitch in on the rent, but Latvia appreciates our efforts to increase defense, deterrence, and de-escalation in the region. Well, clearly they haven't seen how we handle the Canucks losing. Luckily, it's a multinational effort involving several NATO allies, and for Canada, it has become our largest international operation, with up to 915 troops working in the region as part of the battle group. Don't worry, there is a Tim Hortons on site, and as of right now, Canada has no plans to shut it down in 2022. Some people like to say Canada has a great knack for training and mentoring. That's me, I just said that. So we carried on doing just that in Ukraine, where we employ about 200 CAF members to offer a taste of Canadian professionalism along with our splendid equipment. Expect this deployment, which displays strength and solidarity to continue into the future as we work to foster reform of the Western leaning variety in the country. So far, we have provided 623 training courses of various specialities, none of which endorse the consumption of vodka as a primary food group. I don't like sand. It's coarse and rough and irritating and it gets everywhere, much like the Canadian troops working to do their part to ensure stability and security in the Middle East. Operation Impact saw yet another successful year in which up to 850 serving troops worked to train, advise, and assist in the ongoing mission to support the Iraqi security forces and our objective to provide them with leadership and support. The Canadian government has currently extended Op Impact into March of 2022, and longtime fans of the series will have to wait and see if another extension is announced to carry on a CAF presence in the region. Canadian Armed Forces will also continue their commitments to various annual humanitarian and training missions with our partners and allies across the world. We're in Africa, airlifting people and cargo on behalf of UN peace operations. We hang out around the Koreas, making sure that the North stays in the sanctioned corner. And generally, we respond to requests for Canadian aid with a smile and a fine assortment of plaid. Closer to home, we will continue our contributions to NORAD, which entails detecting threats of the aerospace and maritime variety around North America. In the home country, our efforts remain focused on three key areas. First, pandemic bad. Op Laser and Vector were created as Canada's domestic response, and these were accelerated to mock chicken as we supported wide distribution of the vaccine to our serving troops as well as the general public. Kudos to those members who spent considerable time within the civilian population and who went above and beyond in our elderly care homes. They found and corrected policy and practice that amounted to more than a few sprinklings of grievous negligence. The second area of focus was the chilly Canadian North, where we continue to ramp up our presence on land, in the air, and sea. 
A great emphasis on advancing relationships with our many northern communities is ongoing, and the Canadian Ranger Patrol groups are a big part of this endeavor. Along with those weird calf members who enjoy the cold, these teams spend their time connecting directly with the local indigenous populations. Together, we stand ready for emergencies, bear incursions, or when it becomes warm enough for future condo developments. Speaking of which, our last major effort in Canada will be our presence to the growing calls for civil aid when disaster and extreme climate events occur. Floods and fires are demanding an ever-growing response each year. But don't worry, we are equipped with sandbags and I recycle my bottles every month. So they say no plan survives first contact with the enemy. That enemy being our budget. Yet just like that one time we were allowed to order our own office supplies, we can expect several shiny items to arrive mysteriously throughout the year to our benefit. The third Arctic and offshore patrol ship was launched in 2021. The HMCS Max Bernays was sea ready last October. While the first vessel of its type, the Harry DeWolf, recently sailed through the Northwest Passage to complete training exercises and strengthen northern relationships. The fourth vessel, the HMCS William Hall, will undoubtedly make a small Canadian Navy sized splash later this year. The Navy will also continue its progress on the building of 15 new vessels as part of the Canadian Surface Combatant Program, better known as the Type 26 Frigate. These ships will become the backbone of Canada's naval power for many years. Approval and implementation of the project are expected to go forward this year, with the first delivery expected early next, next, next decade. Well, until then, feast your eyes on the new joint support ships, the HMCS Protector and Preserver. The new supply ships will hopefully be completed this year or the next. As for the Air Force, they will be on the edge of their chair force this year as they expect the announcement of the winning bid for Canada's next jet fighter. The future fighter capability project is neck and neck between the Saab Gripen and the F-35. Fanboys, run wild in the comments, I know you wanna. Beside the final CH-148 Cyclone helicopter being delivered later this year, there is a myriad of improvement, modernization, and extension projects going on for various equipment. This includes the CF-18, the CP-140 Aurora, several fixed-wing search and rescue aircraft, and the Victoria-class submarines. Anyone who has been to some of our bases can tell you that we're just one quick wardrobe change away from jumping into a World War II reenactment. So it should come as no surprise that a large focus in the new year will be the continued modernization of our bases. There's new accommodations coming, newly finished dining halls, and a spectacularly well-designed set of base clinics which have been springing up across Canada. In total, over 156 projects are to be completed or continued in 2022. Blended training programs are undergoing wider implementation in an effort to address upcoming shortfalls of trained soldiers. Regular and reserve force members in several different trades can now receive digital learning packages from their home bases across Canada. For better or worse, this could be great news considering CAF recruiting levels have bounced back and even exceeded pre-pandemic levels, while the attrition rate for members dropped to around 5% last year. Okay. What's all of this gonna cost? Well, remaining strong, secure, and engaged doesn't come cheap, and our current military spending sits at around $23.3 billion. The Canadian government has reaffirmed its commitment to increase its defense and military spending, so we can expect to slowly increase our annual spending up to $32.7 billion by 2036. On the bright side, we are replacing major aspects of our Army, Navy, and Air Force in quick succession, and plan to continue doing so far in the future. So that's all good. This year, you should expect our current priorities of Northern defense and domestic disaster response to grow stronger. Anticipate a boom in the development of UAVs, cybersecurity, and those virtual coffee courses. All in all, not a bad year, with plenty of silver lining on the horizon, considering the paralyzed state that most of the world has been in for the last several years. So to the future, I say, may your claims be swift and your duty tasking short. Have a great 2022, guys. Check out our other videos highlighting the military. Here's one about the jets. Here's one about the boats I was talking about. 